NBC's Keir Simmons reporting for us there. Joining us now, Democratic Congressman Jared Moskowitz of Florida. He is now back in Washington after taking part in a bipartisan congressional delegation trip to Israel, where he met with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and the families of the hostages. Congressman, thanks for stopping with us for a moment this morning. Uh, we're talking here about the hostages we had on the parents of a young man named Hirsch, a 23-year-old, earlier in the show. Incredibly moving, but also so impressed by their strength to keep this issue front and center in front of the country, in front of the world, in front of the government to get these hostages out. What did you see and hear on the ground there? Well, regarding the hostages, obviously, um, you know, there are all, there's all sorts of talks going on right now that I'm not going to comment on. But obviously, meeting with these families is heartbreaking. Uh, you know, kids taken in front of parents, parents taken in front of children um, by Hamas, by, you know, Islam, uh, Palestinian Islamic Jihad. Uh, and, you know, the, the hostages are all over the place. Uh, in, in fact, it's, it's possible that some of the hostages have been stashed among civilians in certain places. And so... Uh, and as John Kirby said the other day, you know, it's also possible that Hamas, uh, that some of these civilian, uh, some of these hostages have been killed, or perhaps Hamas even took dead bodies. Uh, and so it's just completely tragic. They're in the middle of this war. They're caught uh, in the middle of it. Uh, and, it and it's just awful. So, Congressman, let me ask, you met with the Prime Minister, you talked to military officials there in Israel um, about this balancing act they have, which is trying to avoid civilian casualties, but bombing places like the hospital we're talking about this morning because Hamas has set up a command center underneath. So you're dealing with an enemy that uses hostages and uses civilians as human shields. How are they navigating that in Israel? Sure. So let me go over a bunch of stuff, because right now, unfortunately, in this country, <clears throat> on social media, our, our kids and us are being manipulated by a psyops by China and Russia, feeding us all sorts of pictures and imagery and fake propaganda uh, on, on what's going on there. But the situation is extremely dire. Uh, Hamas is using that as a headquarters. Israel has tried to set up a field hospital, you know, tried to get the UN to work on it. That hasn't happened. Israel's tried to get, you know, people out of that. Hamas is making them stay at the point of gunpoint to create human shields. Hamas wants them to get killed. Hamas wants Palestinians to be killed and then to feed that propaganda. Hamas main is not interested in winning the day-to-day -day war. They're interested in winning the propaganda war, which they are winning with the helps of China and Russia uh, and the social media platforms. Uh, and so, look, Israel is doing what it can. Uh, but Hamas is turning things down. They're turning down incubators. They're turning down fuel, you know, to get to that hospital. Uh, and, and one of the things that's important here is that, listen, this is absolutely tragic. There are civilians absolutely getting killed. Uh, but the numbers that you know, Hamas is releasing under the guise of the Gaza Ministry of Health. That number includes terrorists. That number includes Hamas terrorists that have been killed, thousands of them. So we're even being manipulated uh, by, by, by the numbers. Uh, but there's no, doubt, uh, there's no doubt that Israel has to do what it can to try to remove Hamas from the Gaza Strip and protect civilians. Israel isn't just trying to liberate Israel from Hamas. They need to liberate the Palestinians, because one of the things that I learned while I was there is that Hamas doesn't just have Israeli hostages. Hamas has taken the Palestinian people hostage. They're not even letting them leave. They're shooting them when they try to leave. Uh, and that's all on video. And putting their own civilians between them and those Israeli rockets. And Mike Barnacle, we have to underline again that there is no fuel or electricity at some of these hospitals. The scenes are gut-wrenching. But Hamas has fuel. Hamas could give the fuel to the hospital to work the generators that work the incubators and work the life-saving support machines that are there. Hamas can do that. They just aren't. And the congressman is absolutely correct. I mean, social media in this country is a total distortion. It's far from the truth and the reality of what's going on every day in Gaza. And, Congressman, uh, with regard to your trip, did you find out anything that you could speak to as to where the location of the hostages might be? Are they separated? Are they underground? Uh, have they been uh, h hidden in, in small groups, large groups? Anything at all? Any information at all that you picked up? 
Yeah, so without going into specific detail, I mean, obviously, due to the large number of hostages, they're not all in one place, they're not all underground, and they're all over, or they're spread out. Uh, and so, uh, you know, look, Israel uh, and the United States are using whatever technology they have at their disposal to try to figure out where the hostages are. But, yeah, I mean, when you're talking about hundreds of people being taken, no, they're, they're, they're spread out, they're all over the place. Uh, and it's extremely difficult, obviously, to figure out how you can rescue, you know, 200 plus people if you have to rescue them one or two at a time. And so, you know, I'm happy that there are negotiations going on. I hope those negotiations are fruitful. Uh, but, you know, I don't want to comment on, on, those, on those further. I'm just hoping that we soon see the release of hostages. I mean, babies. They took children. They took a pregnant mother who gave birth in the Gaza Strip. I mean, this stuff is disgusting. My colleagues right now are watching a video that I saw in Israel. Right now, they're in the Capitol watching that video. And that video is going to show that Hamas copycatted the Nazis. They lined up families in a row. They shot the children in front of the parents. They burned people alive in pits. They're going to see a father jumping on a grenade while the children scream that their dad is dead. And this is not a video game. This is real. They can't believe this is happening. One of the kids is blind uh, as a result. I mean, they're going to see things they have never seen uh, other than when they go to a Holocaust museum. And so, you know, this is this is a war that Hamas wanted. They wanted to fill the world with propaganda, which is happening. Uh, but again, we have to liberate the Palestinian people from Hamas. This is not just uh, about Israel. If the Palestinians are ever going to get a state, and they need a state, I'm for a two-state solution. The only way that's going to happen is to get the Palestinians away from Hamas. So, Congressman, later today, there's going to be a vote scheduled in the House of Representatives on the continuing resolution to keep the government open. Um, it does not include any aid for Israel. Uh, do you plan to support uh, this CR? And what are your broad thoughts about the House of Representatives' ability or ability inability to aid our ally? Yeah, so let me make a couple of points on that. So, you know, I'm for keeping the government open. I'm not for closing the government. Uh, and so, you know, I do plan to support, uh, support keeping the government open, especially because if this doesn't work, who knows what will come uh, out of my Republican House colleagues. They're so dysfunctional. What, what's unclear to me is whether there'll be a motion to vacate uh, the speaker after a bunch of Democrats vote to keep the government open, because that's what happened to Speaker McCarthy. We heard from Republicans, oh, it's not personal, it's not personal with McCarthy. It was about the issue. Okay, well, then I uh, then we should see a motion to vacate Speaker Johnson uh, from my Republican colleagues. You know, uh, on the issue of Israel, let me be clear. Nobody in Congress right now is hurting the state of Israel more than Speaker Johnson. By politicizing that aid bill, by putting cuts in there, by conditioning, conditioning aid, something we have never done, before, something that's going to set a terrible precedent when we need disaster supplementals uh, in the future. By doing that, he played politics. Rather than having 400 people on the House steps, bringing Democrats and Republicans together, supporting our number one ally in their greatest time of need, he decided to divide us. And Israel doesn't have that aid now. They don't have new Iron Dome uh, you know, projectiles that they need because of Speaker Johnson. That bill, if it was clean, would have passed the Senate, the president would have signed it. We need humanitarian aid for the Palestinian people, right? Speaker Johnson has prevented that from happening also. So to, to be clear, if Speaker Johnson doesn't figure out how to get Israel aid, I, I don't suspect he'll be speaker much longer. Congressman Jared Moskowitz, thank you very much for coming on the show this morning. We appreciate it.